Kessler PIF Technologies. Today's demonstration is going to be around the AWS Textract custom query. Uh, this is a new feature. Um, so we're going to log in to our free account here. And um, in the Textract area, you'll see custom queries. Um, you'll notice I've created an adapter, as they call it. Um, a adapter is basically a set of a, a data set, a bunch of documents. Um, so you can see I've already trained the adapter um, to actually add documents to the adapter. Um, and you go through this one through six uh, step process. So I go to the data set here and then I can add additional documents. So I can hit add documents here. You'll notice I've trained a number. So these are mortgage documents that I'm primarily processing. So I'm going to hit the add document here where I can import through an S3 bucket or I'm just going to select upload here. Um, since I already created an adapter model, um, I can use the auto labeling feature, but for our purpose, I'm going to just show quickly how you actually, um, they call them annotations, so where you find certain information like a loan ID and such. So you'll notice here, um, I can add additional documents, so when I do that, I'm going to go into my uh, demo location here, I'm going to grab a mortgage document, and I'm going to grab this PDF. Okay, and so you can see it's been uploaded and you can see the different statuses reviewed is clearly one that's been reviewed and I've gone through and I've tagged the document. And you notice that it extracts uh, the information by page. So you'll notice here um, we don't have any of these filled out, but it's only going to show you red spots where uh, that particular page doesn't have any information. So uh, if we can zoom in here, you'll notice we have uh, the loan number here. So if I come up to the loan number and click in the cell, I can then click the loan. You'll notice one thing I don't like about this is that you can't highlight. So if there's two values next to one another, I can't highlight. I can click one, but I can't grab both. So what I have to do is use this bounding box and lasso that area okay um, now when i move away from this page you'll notice that loan number goes back to red i hate that because it's page based and i get that but i've already captured the loan number i don't want it red because uh, I, I keep forgetting what i actually captured um, so if we come in here now you'll see we can grab the uh, borrower uh, john smith again i have to use the bounding box and select that and then the amount and again because that's one character or one string i don't have to select that uh, lender information and then use my bounding box to grab that information okay bank of america borrower amount so we got everything um, here and then i just hit submit and you'll see actually when i move to the page i grab that loan number it's no longer red again not a fan of how AWS does it, but it seems to, to work well. And then I just hit train adapter. And so I've created an S3 bucket to do that. You can select that and hit choose. A uh, few things here that I've noticed. Um, so when I've created these, each time it will create a new version. Um, but one of the things that I noticed in the details here is when I went to train, it was failing. Um, and it was hard to figure out actually why it was failing. Um, in this case, it was saying that there was a manifest file that had invalid records. So there's a lot of um, issues sort of, or, or prerequisites that are required to run AWS. So you can't have more than 128 characters. Um, so if there's tabular data, you have to actually select each row of data separately, um, which I don't like. And then to figure this out, I had to go into S3 um, into that particular bucket and download the manifest file. Spin that up here. So you'll see in the JSON response that it had an issue with these two documents. So B6 underscore one. And, and you can see here the issue was um, error query result text length limit exceeded. So the query result text length was greater than the maximum length of 128. So whatever value I was, uh, annotation I was grabbing was clearly too long. It took me a while to figure out where to actually grab that. So then I went into assets and then I just went down to that particular document and deleted it. 
um, from from the result set. So you'll notice you see this 16.1, 16.2. So these are each page. So even if you went into the result set, uh, the data set for that particular document, it might be a specific page um, that it's erroring on. Um, so you can come in, and what I've done here is if you type in Textract um, and come over here, you can select the particular data set item that you don't want to include. So like if it was B3, I could come up to the, my actions and exclude from adapter. Um, but again, you know, you have to find the right file because there's 84 different files in here and that's not easy to do. So now when I run the adapter, uh, so if I run this adapter, try adapter, and then I select uh, one of the documents. And as you can see, um, it told, tells you basically what page it found that value on. And when you click on it, it will zone in on that particular area. Again, loan number. It found the loan number a couple different places, as you can see here as well. Um, so it's using that query logic, you know, loan ID, loan number, loan pound sign, and then it's finding that information. Uh, again, it didn't, I got the lender correctly. I got the amount correctly. So that is the Amazon AWS new Textract queries feature. Um, now that's something that's going to be added to our Kodak Info Input solution. Um, right now, you this isn't currently supported, and it is brand new, as you've noticed here. Um, and I've played around with it. I don't think it executes more or better than any of the other solutions out there from Azure or Google. Um, but it is kind of cool to see this new type of approach uh, using queries. Thanks. Like and subscribe for more videos.